Thank you for tuning into this short study on the book of Judges. The book of Judges is not exactly a popular book in the Old Testament, mainly because people find certain stories disturbing, like Jephthah and his daughter and Le the Levite and his concubine. But the book of Judges is really confined to three sections. There's an introduction, there's the bulk of the story, which focuses upon 12 judges, and then there's the conclusion. In the introduction, something is clear. In chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 3, verse 6, we have this introduction to the book of Judges. And the main theme there is that the land and the people of Israel did not drive out the wicked nations. Benjamin did not drive them out, 121. Manasseh did not drive them out, 127. Ephraim did not drive them out, 129. Zebulon did not drive them out, 1 verse 30. Asher did not drive them out, 1 verse 31. And Naphtali did not drive them out, 1 verse 33. And then there was this new generation that came about that did not know the Lord. And in chapter 2, verse 11 to 15, we see all the wickedness that this new generation does. They did evil in the eyes of the Lord, 2 verse 11. 2 verse 12, they forsook the Lord. 2 verse 13, they forsook the Lord and served false gods. And in 2 verse 14, the anger of the Lord burned against this nation of Israel. And in chapter 2, verses 16 to 23, the Lord, it says there that the Lord raises up judges and lays out this cycle of sin. And then we get to chapter 3, verse 7 to 16, verse 31, where we have the description of 12 judges. Now, there's two major judges that they focus more, that the author focuses more upon. And there's six minor judges that are often given only a couple of verses. Well, who are these judges? We're going to go through all 12 of them. Judge number one in chapter three, seven to 11, Othniel. Israel does evil. They forsake the Lord. They forget the Lord. They serve Baals. The anger of the Lord burns against them in three verse eight. In three verse nine, Israel cries out to the Lord, and the Lord raises up Othniel. Judge number two in chapter three, verse 12 to 30. Ehud is that judge. Three, verse 12. Israel does evil. Three, verse 15. Israel, under the punishment of God, cries out to God, and the Lord raises up a deliverer for them, Ehud. Judge number three, Shamgar. It just says in 3 verse 31, he saved Israel. We'll go to number four. In chapter four, verse five to 31, Deborah. Four verse one, Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord gives them to slavery. Four verse three, they cry out to the Lord. In chapter 4, 6 to 7, the Lord will deliver them. In chapter 4, 14 to 15, the Lord has given them. The Lord has gone before them. The Lord, has, the Lord will save them. And God subdues them, the enemies, under his mighty hand, under Deborah. Chapter 4, verse 23. Now we can go to judge number five, Gideon, and then along with them, Avimelech, in chapter six to nine, verse 57. Of course, again, six verse one, Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. They're given into Midian. They cry out to the Lord in chapter six, six to seven, and the Lord delivers Israel through the hand of Gideon and Avimelech. Judge number 6, in 10, verse 1 to 2, Tola, he's to save Israel. Judge number 7, in chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, Jer. 
Number eight is Jephthah. Again, in 10 verse 6 to 12 verse 7, we have Jephthah. 10 verse 6, Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. They serve Baals and other false gods. They forsake the Lord. 10 verse 10, they cry out to God in confession of sin. The Lord delivers them. Judge number 9, Ibzan, in chapter 12, 8 to 10. Chapter 12, 11 to 12, number 10, Elon. In number 11, 12, 13 to 15, Abdon. The, the final judge, number 12, in chapter 13, 1 to 16, verse 31, we have Samson. Again, in 13, verse 1, Israel does evil in the eyes of the Lord. 13, verse 5, Samson delivers him. And we see God's greatest act at the end of the life of Samson, where he brings down the building, destroying many Philistines. So we had our introduction, the main part of the book of Judges, with these 12 judges, six major, six minor, and then we have the conclusion of the book of Judges, where there's a focus upon three stories, Micah, the Levite, and Benjamin. Now, some of these stories are so absolutely disturbing. For instance, the Levite cups up, cuts up his concubine into 12 pieces and sends those 12 pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel. All these stories in the conclusion of the book of Judges focus on one main theme. Chapter 6, 17, verse 6, 18, verse 1, 19, verse 1, and 21, verse 25. In Israel, there was no king, and everyone did what they wanted. The book of Judges is really teaching us three main things. First, the book of Judges teaches us about the holiness of God. The holiness of God. We see God's anger and punishment of sin throughout this book. You cannot ignore the holiness of God. But as well, it teaches the total depravity of humans. We're sinful. We do evil in the eyes of the Lord. God punishes that sin, and then we cry out to God, and he saves us. And that brings us to the third aspect of the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, we see the grace of God highlighted. When Israel cries out, the Lord saves them. The Lord raises up a deliver deliverer. The Lord gives freedom to the people of Israel when they cry out to God for mercy. This book actually points us forward to the Lord Jesus. One of the words used to speak about the Lord's deliverance from the Philistines and foreign nations is actually the word save. God saves his people. And that points us forward to the very person and work of the Lord Jesus. God sends his judge, his king, his deliverer, the Lord Jesus, and he saves us. Because of Christ Jesus' work on the cross, his death, his resurrection, his work of the Holy Spirit applying the truths of God's to our heart. We have salvation and deliverance because we are just like Israel. We do evil in the eyes of the Lord. And often we do what we want to do and we are in complete rejection and defiance of God and his grace. Today, if you're a Christian, thank God that he has sent his deliverer, his judge, his king, the Lord Jesus, in our place. If you're outside the Lord Jesus, you need to see your life as one that has done evil against the holy God. And you need to cry out to Jesus now and find mercy and grace in your time of need. Amen. Praise the Lord.